Hello and welcome to Power Drift and hello and welcome to beautiful Rajasthan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ten Hart. Wait, I'm not Ten Hart. Ten Hart was supposed to be here, he couldn't. Let's take this from the top. Now when you think of premium car brands, which names come to mind? Think of the mass one. Now, did the name Tata come to mind? I'm sure it did not. But the Harrier is looking to take the Tata nameplate upmarket. And to do that, it's also going to take on the likes of Jeep's Compass. And to do that, Tata has pulled out the stops and intends to wow you. Well, how exactly and exactly how premium is the Harrier going to get? Well, we're going to take a close look and figure all that out. Well, the Harrier is looking to wow right from the outside. If you've seen the H5X concept at the Auto Expo, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's practically this, right? I mean, from that aggressive LED DRL up top, which also doubles up as the indicator, and the headlamp setup, which has come down here low. That's the HID projector for the low beam, this is the high beam, and this is the fog lamp. The way it looks, well, I think we can pick sides. For me, it's about all right, but a lot of people love the way it looks. And on the whole, I think it is a striking design. Uh, does it wow you? Let us know in the comments. But there is something that a lot of people would have liked a little bit better, and that's the wheel size. What you're getting with the Harrier is this 17-inch rim. Now, Tata Motors have been a bit cautious with the wheel size, keeping in mind that it should be easy to maintain, low on punctures, that size. But this is going to be offered with 18-inch wheels as well in the future. And when you're looking at this in terms the proportions, the overall size of the Harrier, it is an impressive looking vehicle. It has presence and that's down to the proportions and that's also because this monocoque chassis is actually a Land Rover chassis, the Discovery Sport. That's what it's based on and its long wheelbase is thanks to that, 2741 millimeters. That's the longest in the class, longer than even the Honda CRV, and overall length is also longer. And coming to the rear, this is where you see the Impact 2.0 design getting really much sharper. this slingshot line running right through the waist over here and this band I feel the black plastic here looking a little too thick this could have been lighter but overall I like the way the rear looks the Harrier uh, name coming right in the center something we don't see on too many cars but it is a touch that once you get used to you end up liking it a lot but something that I like right away is the bumper the way it sits flush with the overall design it really makes it look sporty and tight right You've got fused LED elements here in the tail lamp, makes it look that much more modern, that much sharper. And well, now it's time for us to get on the inside. It's just looking so premium and so inviting. And in terms of the design, the materials, this is genuinely opened up a whole new level of expectations from Tata. You look at the dash top plastic, it's got a grain, very fine grain, and it's soft touch. You look at that four wood finish, yes, it's four wood, but look at it. You would think that it has texture, but it doesn't. It got some technology and materials from Japan to get that look. And the use of silver and the chrome accents inside the cabin, it's just see this light piping around the infotainment system here and the air conditioning vents. Very cool. And of course, that screen as well. Tata set up the design so that they could adapt to the modern tech that would be available when the Harrier comes out. And here you go, you have an 8 inch display which is, you know, uh, in landscape mode. It really looks good. It doesn't crop into your field of view when you're looking out forward. And uh, well, the display is certainly very nice. It uh, is very responsive. You've got Android Auto on offer right now. Apple CarPlay will be on offer later. And that's not the only bit here. You've also got a 7 inch display here for the driver and the two communicate. So if you're using Android Auto and the maps over there it kind of gives you directions here on the top portion of the screen as well to make it that much easier and safer for you to use you've also got displays for power and torque so you know how much you're using as you drive along and uh, that's not all you also get fully automatic air conditioning system here on the top end model this is the XZ variant and uh, along with that you've also got tons of safety features you've got ABS and dual airbags as standard from the base variant this top end version gets six airbags 
ABS, ESP, ESC, and along with that, a whole host of add-on features which improve safety, like rollover mitigation, you've got hill descent control for off-road, so it's got lots of that. And of course, this being a Tata, practicality is never going to be far away. Lots of storage spaces, whether it's here on the console between the front driver's seat, and uh, there's a storage bin here, which also gets cooling so that you can keep a couple of cans here to stay cool, large door pockets, but there are a few oddities. For instance, the USB port is tucked away here. You can't see it. To plug your USB cord in, you don't have to really peek down and do that. And uh, well, that's not the only one. Even to open this, it should have been a lever, but instead you have to push in and then pull up which is a bit strange but these are niggles and aside from that there are a few fit and finish issues that we've seen edges here and there but we're treating these as kind of pre-production vehicles and the final ones should get even the smaller details right in place there is one thing that Tata could have and should have done better and that's the look and finish of the steering boss it just looks too plain for a car that would be costing about 20 lakh rupees I would want this to be the most premium bit in the car because I'm going to be looking at it all the time. With the Harrier, the occupants in the back aren't taking a back seat. You can see how spacious this is. The seats are well scooped out. This is a place that you would spend time in comfortably even on longer drives and well there's one thing that will become obvious to you right now over here if you just look up a little bit and a lot of people have been asking us about this no sunroof on offer will come in later though but right now if you have to choose where we want to spend time with it's quite obvious we'd like to be there the right driving position takes a little bit of time here on the area. What does it feel like on the inside? I can't help but draw comparisons to the Discovery Sport. In the Discovery Sport, you feel like you're sitting in an SUV, right? You're above everything. The window line is low below you. The A-pillar also feels more upright. Whereas here on the Harrier, you feel you're kind of sitting inside it. It ends up feeling more sporty, more dynamic and more cocooned. The Harrier is using a 2-litre diesel engine. It's been dubbed the Cryotech. You know it's from the Jeep Compass, right? And it's been detuned to 140 PS and 350 Nm meters of torque, which means, oh my god, it's down on par, right? Wrong. What it's up on is drivability. In city conditions, you'll find that it has so much torque. But right now, we are doing about 50 kilometers an hour. We are at 1500 RPM no hassles you can actually be in third gear at walking speeds put your foot down and it'll go ahead smoothly that is really impressive the harrier also has drive modes so by default you're running around in city mode which is actually perfect for city use and talking about city usability i'm sure a lot of you are wondering where's the automatic well tata is getting an automatic gearbox from hyundai and it's currently being set up for the harrier we would expect it to be a year before we see that in showrooms. So if you're thinking that this would now end up feeling weak or you know lethargic on the highway, don't think that because this is actually punchy. So if you want to do a long road trip, you got friends in the back, lots of luggage, yeah, it'll pull just fine. Just keep in mind revving it up hard past 4000 RPM, eh, that's not really necessary. It's doing a lot of the work well under that. If you're the kind of guy who likes to drive hard when you get a nice twisty road, well, you're going to enjoy the Harrier there too. You won't believe, but this big SUV can turn in really quite quickly. I'll show you ride quality. Large speed breaker. <laughs> it's gone, done and dusted. As you would expect of a car that's based off a Land Rover platform, the worse the road gets, <laughs> the more composed it feels. It feels more in control. And to deal with those kind of conditions, Tata have also developed a couple of drive modes specifically for rough roads and a drive mode for wet roads. I almost forgot, all-wheel drive, right? You want that in an SUV? Well, you can't have it. Not now and not any time soon. Apparently, not enough people really want one. So, for now, that's off the table. At the end of a long drive in the Harrier, you'd feel largely fatigue-free. 
That's because the engine's punchy, the ride quality is good, it doesn't have too much body roll, so everything's in check except for the wind noise or for that matter any ambient noise. The cabin just doesn't feel as well insulated as I would have liked. This feels like a premium experience and a quieter cabin would have certainly amplified that experience even further. Whoa, it's time to hand back the Harrier to Tata Motors and our takeaway from this drive is really strong product. It's capable just about everything you throw at it, it can handle. And at the same time, it is also exciting and inviting. Pricing, that's the key point, right? We expect it, the indications are for it to be priced between 16 to 21 lakh rupees on road. It still makes it great value. So, if you're thinking of buying a premium car in the 20 lakh rupee range, and you think about brands, Tata had better crop up in your mind.